The carpal bones are a group of eight irregularly shaped bones. They are organized into two rows, proximal and distal. Now our approach towards studying them here is, from lateral to medial. Remember once again, from lateral to medial. First let's look at a popular mnemonic to memorize these eight bones, and these are again laterally to medially. The mnemonic is, she looks too pretty for the proximal row, try to catch her for the distal one. She looks too pretty, try to catch her. Let us look into radiography of the hand and wrist and understand structures. These are the radius and ulna. This projection of distal radius on the lateral surface is its styloid process. And this one here, is the ulnar styloid process. This lateral and round articular eminence is the head of ulna. Now, let's proceed to our first carpal which is scaphoid. It articulates with the radius, lunate, trapezoid, trapezium and capitate. It forms the radial boundary of carpal tunnel. The next crescent-shaped carpal is lunate. Laterally, articulating with scaphoid, medially with the triquetrum and distally with the capitate. The triquetra bone also called triquetrum is located on the medial side of wrist. It is on the ulnar side of the hand, but does not articulate with the ulna. It connects with the pisiform, hamate, and lunate bones. This smallest carpal which is a sesamoid bone is called pisiform. The name is derived from Latin word pisum which means, p. It is located in the flexor carpi ulnaris wrist tendon. Now in the dorsal row on radial side, the first carpal bone looking irregular in shape, is the trapezium. It articulates with first metacarpal distally, scaphoid proximally, trapezoid and second metacarpal medially. It is also called the greater multangular bone. Our next carpal is trapezoid which is also called the lesser multangular bone. It is a four-sided bone and it articulates with four bones, scaphoid proximally, second metacarpal distally, trapezium bone laterally, and capitate medially. The largest carpal, capitate bone, is found in the center of the carpal bone region. It articulates with the third metacarpal bone, the middle finger, and forms the third carpometacarpal joint. The hamate is an irregular carpal present abuts the metacarpals of the little finger and ring finger. It is readily distinguishable by its wedge shape and a hook-like process projecting from its palmar surface, it is called as, hook of hamate. Take a thorough look at all the eight carpals now. The most commonly fractured carpal bone is the scaphoid. Scaphoid fracture occurs due to a fall on an outstretched hand with complete weight falling on the palm. This fracture usually occurs during motor accidents or sports activities. This picture shows the reference percentage of different types of carpal fractures. Fact number 2. Most commonly dislocated carpal bone is the lunate. In this x-ray, you can very clearly observe the dislocation of lunate. The lunate looks displaced and rotated volarly. Rest of the carpal bones are in a normal anatomic position in relation to the radius. Now let's come to the most important point of vascular necrosis. It can occur in case of a scaphoid fracture. Always remember it happens in the proximal scaphoid. It is very important for your exams. This is your scaphoid bone and blood vessels enter into scaphoid from the distal end. So blood is more plentiful where it enters the bone that is at the distal end in case of scaphoid bone. So scaphoid is designed in such a way that already the distal part has a good blood supply. On the top of that if there's a fracture, blood supply is interrupted towards proximal scaphoid. Without appropriate nourishment, proximal scaphoid begins to die which is called as AVN or avascular necrosis. The anatomical snuffbox, also known as the radial fossa, is a triangular depression found on the lateral aspect of the dorsum of the hand. It is located at the level of the carpal bones, and best seen when the thumb is extended. In the past, this depression was used to hold snuff, ground tobacco, before inhaling via the nose, hence it was given the name snuffbox. 
Anterior border of the snuffbox is formed by tendons of extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus which are lateral tendons, while the posterior border is by a tendon of extensor pollicis longus which is medial. Floor of the snuffbox. It is formed by base of the first metacarpal. Trapezium. Scaphoid. And the styloid process of radial bone. Contents of the snuffbox includes. Cephalic vein. Radial artery. And the superficial radial nerve.